Robin, thank you for inviting me um, to this actually. Um, and for, for the sake of everyone, if I do speak fast, or if my words are complicated, please say, it will make it easier for me so I can um, use words that are kind of uh, uh, practical for you and you can follow rather than me assuming that what I'm saying is on the level that you want to. Um, so apologies earlier on. Um, yes, my name is Ripon. I have been giving advice for over eight, nine years. <clears throat> Sorry about my throat, it's partly because of cold, you know, but it is what it is. Um, yes, I've been giving advice for over, I was, I was 10 years really. Um, in London now, I actually assess quality of advice delivered, provided by advisors in Citizens Advice Bureau, either in Greenwich Citizen Advice or Lewisham Citizen Advice or Bren Citizen Advice. On a professional level, I check the quality advice given to members of the public. And that's my full-time job. And I've got a team of auditors who go and assess the work of advisors. I am literally the bosses of all auditors. So that's my experience when it comes to advice. However, the reason I have decided to go deep into universal credit is because, when I, it's because when I was giving advice, I was coming across horrible stories. I thought rather than kind of not do anything about it, let's educate people and that's why I'm here today to help people to learn more about universal credit. So let me just share my screen. Um, let's see with sound as well. Hopefully it will help those who want to develop the English along with learning about the subject. I'll, do, I'll try to do both at the same time where the subject is also practical for you, uh, educational for you and what I don't want you to feel is that you leaving this workshop feeling as though your questions are not answered. I want you to feel as though you came here, you had a question in your head, you want those questions to be answered and please, please, please ask those questions. But ultimately, when it comes to this workshop, it's really it's about you taking part. And that's what I, I will try to do is really from early on, try to help you to get involved so at least any mistakes you make when you learn, you, you make it here. So then moving forward, when you go to your own lives, you can learn from, uh, expand your learning from here, basically. That's what I'm trying to help you out with. So it's all about learning about concepts. Uh, what is universal credit? What isn't universal credit? How universal credit works? Those are the things. So, just to give you a summary of it, as you can see, summary of, actually it should be um, summary of the subject or yeah, su yeah, or summary or objective of the course is first we look at differences between means tested benefit and non means tested benefit. But don't worry, you don't have to know anything yet because we'll go through it anyway. Uh, means tested benefit and non means tested benefit, we'll, we'll explore that. We'll then explore universal credit and the criteria for claiming universal credit. And of course, all the way long, I want you to get involved. We'll look at cases and case studies. And I want to use your brain to see um, what, if you are following me, if not, we'll go through it again to make sure you are on the same page as I am, um, both with criteria in a way. And then we'll take a brief break just to give, give you a breathing space. And then we'll start the second part with how do you um, challenge decision of DWP, in another word, Department of Work and Pension, and universal credit is given by Department of Work and Pension. And when you are struggling, or anyone you know who is struggling, what options are there? What support is out there from councils and from DWP? and from anyone else. So that's what you'll be getting from me as well as for these slides. So let's start with um, 
means tested and non means tested benefit? It's a question really for you, not for me to answer. So feel free to put your hand up and, and let me know. So I, I will just unmute yourself and have a guess in terms of what you think what means tested benefit means and non means tested benefit means. I'm here in silence. Can we invite people to write in the chat? If you want, if you, yeah, absolutely. You can, you can invite them to chat, uh, people write on the chat or just unmute yourself and say it. Don't be afraid of making mistakes because ultimately it's for you, not for me. I know, but I'll wait and see. <laughs> so this word means, means tested. We're... Can, I, can I know both of them? What does that mean? Like what does mean? Tested and non tested mean? Sorry? So many means in here. Um. <laughs> yeah, so I suppose we need to explain the word means. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first means, or oh, Rupon, do you want to do it? I mean, you have a go. We'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. It's about you telling me, and then I'll, I'll listen. What if, I, and then what if I get it wrong? All right. So your means, when we talk about our means in general, it, mean, it means we're talking about like what you have, um, what you have in your possession. So your means in this situation is talking about um, like your, your savings, basically, your income and your savings, yeah, your financial means, what you have in your possession financially so they're testing really do you have money and savings or do you not brilliant um i mean you kind of hit the nail really but elena nadia irene <laughs> D, anyone else want to have a go um, yeah. you, i think oh. to say something. Uh, she's a mute I have no idea. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, right. Uh, Go ahead. I heard someone say something. Yeah, I'm um, uh, Tala. Uh, I think the mean tested is mean benefit are available to the people. Okay, to the people. Fantastic. Okay. Any yeah. other mm -hmm. offers? Yeah, I think to people who can uh, prove or demonstrate that her in income is uh, like low. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a really good definition. Yeah, so, so it's to do with proving your income, how much money you have. Or uh, if, you, if you have a right to apply. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the, the yeah. testing is, yes, if you have the right. So it means is about proving how much. And then the level, testing yeah. is, you know. Which level your, your, your deserve? Which level? Mm -hmm. Which level? Thanks, June. Oh, I mean, it's great that you guys are starting to think because as time goes on, you'll be talking more anyway. So you might as well uh, warm yourself up. So at least you've had a go at it. And I think most of you are there. When we are talking about in terms of universal credit or any other benefits in Britain, it, is, it boils down to two things. Fundamentally, really, is whether it's means-tested state benefit or non-means-tested state benefit. Now, it boils down to whether you have savings, whether you have income, whether you have shares, whether you've got investment, all those things that is quantified into money because when you claim benefits, ultimately it's about money, isn't it? So any forms of shares that you might have where it's valued into money, that's what, or brings you money, that's what we mean by means-tested benefit and non-means-tested benefit. Now, means tested benefit, there's several. So are non means tested benefit. 
So what I would like you to do, G, can you see this list of so many different types of benefit? By the way, there are plenty more, but I've decided to exclude so many uh, and keep only these to make it easier for you. So what I would like is Lucy or Robin to organize two groups. One group will come back to me and say, these benefits are means tested. Don't worry about it if you get it wrong. I want you, one group to work on means tested benefit. Don't forget, any benefit you get that is linked with um, your savings, i.e. whether you, you're entitled on your income or savings. The other one is duration and not based on your income or savings. So one group has to come back and tell me which benefits are means tested and which benefits are not means tested and why yes and why no. It's a complicated one, but I'm sure you make mistakes. I'm sure you will know as well. Some of you will know, but this is where I need two groups. One for means tested benefit, another group for non means tested benefit. Then you choose the benefit from the table. Can... Okay. We stop share, or, or how are we going to? I could stop share, and also I will send this on a JPEG or PDF um, document on chat. So you that can would be great. Mm. So let me stop sharing. Okay. I can try to do a screen. Okay, so I created two rooms. Uh, you will be invited either to room one or room two. In room one, you're going to think which are means-tested benefits. So when uh, people are asked what income they have. And in room two, the other ones, non-means-tested. Okay? Yeah. So let's try. You will all receive an invitation to a room. And uh, you have how long should we get? give? Just five minutes. Yeah, five minutes is perfect. I'll put the timer on you, so yeah. That's good. So time. Okay. I will keep my mouth zip. It's for you to work on. report. <laughs> Yes, Nidia, but I'm not um, talking. You are talking okay. and you are doing the thing. I'm yeah. just here for the sake of it. I'm not, I'm not going to give you answers either. Right, so can you see those now? All of them. Yeah. So that was the, these are all the different possible, well, not all, most of the common benefits that people can claim and claim from the government. So what Ripon, just to say again, or maybe Lexi, you're very good at explaining um, things. Can you just try one more time in your words? What, is, what does means tested mean and what does non means tested mean? Okay, so means tested means. Um, oh, Lexi, I was going to ask Lexi. Oh, oh. Oh, you're muted. Hi, Hi, good morning, good afternoon. Um, Sorry, I was a bit late. So I have my baby here. So, <laughs> um, well, I guess the means tested benefits are those that um, have kind of uh, been tested and proved by people to work, um, such as um, uh, like income, income based benefits or, or income support. You know, this, this, um, these benefits that people normally that are, are there to for people to actually claim that you can easily access without much information, you just go um, uh, and, and ask for them because they already been tested and, and they are on. It's a bit different, Alexa. So all it means is that some are basically anybody can claim it. It doesn't. You can be a millionaire and mm -hmm. claim it's your right. Yeah, no one is going to check under certain circumstances. You can have like loads of money, a, a big car, you know, five houses, and you still, it's still your right. So that's the non means tested one. The means tested is only for the people who are on the low income or whatever, and you know, need, and they have to prove that. And the testing is about testing really whether you are on a low income or not. 
a means tested again means that they, you're going to be you have to prove it you're low income the non means tested means that you can be rich and still you you are allowed to have it uh, well, let's uh, go uh, one <laughs> personal independence payment do we think it's means tested or non means tested even if we have to guess non means tested non non yeah, non, yeah. Okay, so anybody can get it. You can have a lot of money, but you're still allowed to get it. All right, yeah. attendance allowance. Means I tested. I think um, not, uh, um, this one, uh, dependence allowance. Yes, I'm, uh, this one as well, not. Uh, not means tested. Yeah, because okay. if you have our, disability, uh, or, or you uh, you have disability or you sick or something no means money you got but you have right to apply okay. I think. all right let's see rip on is gonna I'm not gonna answer because I don't know um, and because we can wait anyway council tax support? Uh, I think this one is tested tested means tested. Nelsia, will you read through the rest of them and I'll just tick and cross? So, um, social fund is mean tested. Others agree? But I think this one, housing benefit, yes, uh, they tested, but uh, working, ta um, working tax credit and pension credit. Hold on, hold on. Let, let, let Nelsia talk us through them one by one and then... And um, child benefit is tested because they have to have a proof of child that you've got. So it's mean tested. You only claim when, when you have a child. So, yeah. Uh, but means is about money. So it's non tested. Oh, so non, non tested then. So they have right to claim for that. Okay. Everyone is, has the right to claim it. Even if you're rich. I think, yeah, yeah because it's yes, for your child. Yes. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no. I think if you have over 50,000, I think, a year, you should pay some of it back. I don't, I don't remember really, but... Oh, so that one then maybe... I mean, I mean, then it is means tested. Yeah. Okay. Because of, uh, you have to prove that you've got a child to claim, so that's what I'm no, no, but Nelsia, just saying means is only about the money. Because in any way, yeah. you will have to prove but, uh, yeah, paperwork. I can't claim a pensioner, a pension credit, because I'm not that old. It's a different yeah. thing, you know, but means is about your money. Robbie, can I say? Mm. Uh, child benefit, I know the people uh, uh, not, not taken mm. and had the money, they are rich. They have mm. ha got the house as well, everything, and they got the job, the benefit. So I think. Okay, well, let's uh, see. Let's try it. Let's try it as non, as non means tested. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Now, see it. It's it mean tested, disability living allowance. Mm -hmm. Will you read them all out? Yeah. And working tax credit is non mean tested because when you're working you've still got that if you're low income yeah. like for example for like a single mom or, or, or but then, then, it's, then it is, then what you're saying is it is means it is means tested because means you have tested. to be on low yeah. income <laughs> Yeah, okay. that's what I said. It's mean. Right. Excuse me, Robin. Yes. It's possible one question. Mm. A person who is not working can continue to pay tax for when he is uh, 65 years or to be able to collect in the future the pension. Uh, can we leave that for when we get back into the room? Okay. Then, uh, okay. Yeah, please. Um, Thank you. All right, universal credit, we've got about 10, 15 seconds. Means tested. It's tested. Means tested. 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 Tested.
CB contribution based J job seekers allowance. Oh, because not everyone is coming back. We're enjoying ourselves there. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I just to share. Oh, that's our time. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I called you too early. I, I was thinking it's too late already. <laughs> oh, it's only a few seconds. Yeah. Um, what is I'm trying to find the actual thing. Oh. Let's see if I had it. Ah, uh, yeah, L Lucy, just for information, this is what, um, this is what uh, we had. Okay, let's, let's, oh, okay, do you want to, do you want to, shall we go through it? <laughs> is that any good? No. Yeah. We didn't have enough time. That's no, fine. it's fine. Well, now let's go through it together. How about this? Yeah. So what did people say about personal independence? Now, so we, before we, we talk about that, we're looking at means-tested benefits and non-means-tested benefits. Mm. Means-tested benefits that you get based on your means. So based on your income, based on your savings are taken into consideration, basically. So, and non-means-tested, it doesn't really matter uh, whether you've got savings or not, you can still get it. So st starting with personal independence payment, is it means tested or non-means tested benefit? Quickly. Say that again, please. I our group said not. Our group said not. Okay, no, and why not? Oh, he, because uh, this person earned a lot of money. He okay. not deserve to... Uh, uh, universe versus uh, uh, credit. Okay, now, well, to sum it up, the reason this is non means tested is because you get it for, due to your disability. And you're right, some people have said it's got nothing to do with how rich you are, it's all about your actual situation, your circumstance, circumstances of getting that benefit. So the state, the government, can support you so you become able to do things. So this benefit is, is disability related. Same goes with the attendance allowance, but that's because you're a pensioner. Now, council tax support, um, uh, I've heard in my team anyway, where they've said is means tested. Yes, yeah. true. that is true because councils charge or decide how much you should be contributing towards collecting bins and other things based on your financial situation, basically. Yeah. Housing benefit is exactly the same. Rip, um, Rip I'm okay. gonna um, just override yours and tick as we go along. Just so sure, absolutely. No, feel free to do so. Absolutely, yeah. If it helps, absolutely. Bear with me a second. Yep, go ahead. I'll, I'll remove mine, I think. Yeah, I think mine, is mine being shared? Yes, go ahead. So this one is, oops, where is my pen? Sorry, Rip, um, oh, that's fine. Fine. Ten, ten, ten. All right, so this one is not means tested, mm -hmm. not means tested, means tested. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. Means tested. In that's, well, what is income, well, income based job seekers allowed? What does that say? Ah. So yes, it must be yes. then, because it's talking about your income. Yeah, so income-based employment support allowance. Mm. IB means income-based. Mm. Yeah, income support. Tested. Means tested. In means yeah, tested. Means Pension yeah. credit. Um, no. Means tested as well. No, no. Yeah. No. I think oh, yes. It, a pension okay. credit is yes, it is means tested based on your savings and based on your income. You get your state pension. When state pension isn't enough, you get pension credit to top it up. However, there's a limit to how much you can get. So for example, if you have private pension, that will be considered as part of your pension credit. 
So, so social fight. Means tested because it's social. Yes. Child benefit. That's an interesting one. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, there is a limit, isn't it? There is a limit. Uh, I think, yes. No means. Yeah, uh, in each one actually. It actually falls under non means tested. However, yeah. recently there is a cap. I think one, one person earning more than 45 and a couple earning 50 will be getting it. And if you do get it, you have to pay it back, basically. That's what it is. Now, yeah. what about disability living allowance? Disability living allowance is non tested. Non tested. Yes. Yeah. Non -tested. yes. Yeah, not being tested. Being tested. Absolutely. It's, a disability living allowance is very similar to personal independence payment and attendance yes. allowance. In fact, uh, ch for children is disability living allowance, for adults is personal independence payment, and for pensioners is attendance allowance. And there were confusion around working tax credit. Uh, what are your thoughts on the working tax credit? I think it's um, the main because the, that depends on your circumstance. Yeah, means test, tested. Means. Yes, when you're working and work isn't paying, that's when you get working tasks. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Ah, uh, uh, now we're coming to our subject, universal credit. Um, tested, definitely. Good, there we are. So once yeah, you've got that pair on, under your belt, then we can move to universal credit later. So a carer's allowance? Uh, care allowance is care allowance, yes. 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 yes, I think it's care allowance. I think no, I think yes, okay. No, yeah. Care's allowance itself is non means tested, i.e., you can get it okay. just because you're caring for someone else and you yeah. top it up with yeah. other benefits, but really on its own, it's not means tested. It's based on your circumstance. And the circumstance is you're looking after someone for over 35 hours, plus that that person has affected by disability. So wow. how about contribution based JSA? It's mean tested. Any other offers? The allowing is support, no? Not tested. Contribution based JSA and contribution based uh, contribution. JSA. Yeah. It does mean. Um, with both contribution based based JSA and contribution based ESA, both are non means tested because no. they're not going to be looking at your savings. No. They're not going to look at your income. The only thing they will look at is how much national insurance you paid when you're working wow. or when you worked. Mm. Yeah, that's why it's non means tested. Both of them. Statutory sick pay? Not tested, <laughs> not means tested. Oh, brilliant. Winter fuel allowance? No test. Winter fuel allowance is means tested <laughs> because they will ask you what benefits you're getting, what is your income. State pension? No. Non means tested. Non means tested. Uh, it is, state pension is because your income is low, and also you contribute towards your, um, whilst Contribu you're working. Yeah, it, it's same thing as contribution-based JSA, but it's state pension, basically. Now, bereavement allowance? Uh, so are we saying state pension is non-means tested? Non-means tested. And winter yeah. fuel allowance? Winter fuel is uh, means tested. Bereavement allowance? Actually, sick pay? None. None. Mm, no, no. I see and, no. and bereavement allowance? No, non means No. Um, no. You get it when you've lost your husband, basically. Oh. So, yeah, so it's, uh, it's non means tested. Well, like if someone lost their husband, they can yes. claim for that. Yes, absolutely. And yeah, and, if, and you have children. So you're bereaving. You're, you're, you know, obviously, that's a difficult situation. You can get that. So I'm, um, so yeah. this. Yeah, my aunt, because my auntie's husband died because of cancer, and they she got three kids. So okay, so yeah, know. we'll have a look into have a look into that anyway. So, so social this funds. Sorry, Ripon. 
uh, social fund is means tested. A budgeting loan uh, and other things is means tested. So it comes under social fund. All right, so, I'll stop Yeah, so the reason I want to go through that, you can, you can all straight away see it's quite complicated. There are quite a lot of things going on. Um, however, I wanted you to get familiar with means tested benefit and non means tested benefit because, yeah. as you know, universal credit is a means tested benefit. Means so, yeah. So now let's look at the criteria. I know we've identified that universal credit is a means tested benefit. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Are you all happy with that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So now, now let's go deep into um, the criteria. So this is the basic criteria. We've identified that when we are looking at universal credit, you you can you can work, and work isn't paying enough before you can claim working tax credit. Now, even if you're working and work isn't paying. You can claim you see. Even you're not working, you have disability or looking for work, you can still claim you see. So yes, your income is low. In principle, you should be 18 or above unless you're in foster care or you've got children of your own whilst you're 16, 17, you can claim universal credit. Um, you are under pension age, except when there is in a you know, relationship and living together where one person is a pensioner and another person isn't, then you have to be on universal credit. I will talk about that a little bit later anyway. And then you have a partner, you and your partner have 16,000 pounds or less in savings. I'll go more, I'll talk more about savings later anyway. So don't worry about not absorbing enough. Just get familiar with the basics first. You have to be residing in the UK uh, and you accept a claim and commitment, but that's not for all, only for those who are looking to work. So, no, I missed one. So, yeah, claim and commitment. Now, let's talk about universal credit and your income. Are you following me so far? Does it make sense? Okay, so universal credit and your income, that's when let's say you're working. Or obviously if you don't have any income, you're a job seeker, so you get universal credit, which will have your personal allowance, your housing, if you have ch children, your child element, all three combined together, great, no problem at all in one package and you, and you get it per month. Why if you're working, then what happens? So this is when a taper rule applies, a taper system applies, where your salary is taken into account and it's tapered or waived over your salary. So let's say, for example, um, you earn one pound by working in a job. Out of that one pound, 63p will be taken into account. So some might argue that under universal credit, you, it works out better for you. However, the rule is every penny, penny you earn, every pound you earn, you'll be um, only 63p will be um, counted towards your total um, universal credit. So just to kind of give you a clue, can I play this video, please? So ignore my face, but it will focus on the subject matter anyway. <laughs> Let's have a look. Um, let me see. Are you ready? Hello? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Let me know if you can hear it. Can you hear it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. We can't see it yet, though. Yeah. Uh, you will need to reshare it on your screen. Ah, oh, I need to share. Okay. Let's share it. Sorry about this. My fault. Let's stop. Um, share. Share sound. Okay, ready? Yeah. There we go. Ah, okay, it won't, okay, there we go. Let's do it like this. Can you hear it? Yeah. 
Awesome. Today, I'm going to be talking about zero hours contracts and universal credit. So what is zero hours contract? It's a contract between an employer and a worker. You work without a fixed term of hours. If the employer wants you to work five hours in one week, 10 hours another, fine. The employer cannot though say you can only work for me and no one else if it's zero hours contract. You won't get sick leave. You won't get sick leave. And um, you might get paid weekly, monthly, or even every two weeks in arrears. So with universal credit, you have to wait four weeks for the assessment period and one more week until you received your first payment. Taper rate. Under universal credit, for every pound you earn, DWP will take into account 63 pence to calculate how much they should deduct. So what will happen? Your employer will send the information to HMRC. HMRC will then send the information to DWP and then the information will get passed to local council. DWP assumes that there are four weeks in one month. So you get paid as though there are four weeks in a month. If you're worried about opening up a claim or fear of being overpaid, or let's say your account is closed, you can always appeal. If you do need to appeal, the process is going through mandatory consideration, which you have to do within a month when you get a decision from DWP. So that's one. The other one is where mandatory consideration has taken too long or there is not any other avenues left, you may have to think about judicial review. For that, you need legal advice. Ah, the problems. Yes, don't forget the problems. Naturally, by nature of zero's contract, the hours are unpredictable. So we're dealing with uncertainty of your work hours. It could also be that since your income is fluctuating, there is going to be change in the amount you get with universal credit. It could also impact your council tax support. So the most important thing to do is making sure that you let DWP and also council know about your situation. The other problem you'll come across is your actual payment from your employer doesn't fit the way DWP pays because you might be receiving your income weekly, every two weeks, or monthly. DWP will pay monthly. You need to be wary though, because the problem might be also that you earn too much, or you think you're earning too much, or DWP might think you're earning too much. As a result, you claim it for you see this claim. It's not like, it's not like um, a inspection. Now you know what zero hours contracts and universal credit are all about, the only thing you need to be careful of is your spending. So are you sure of that covered enough? Shall I do it again? question from this um can i have a question it says like um um this is how the universal credit go ahead paid and then it all depends how you're wasting what's that mean sorry uh, let me just remove this for now could you uh, repeat the question for me it says like this is how the universal credit pay you and it all depends how you wasted. So 
So that's, that's ah, kind of big question. Yes, that is a very interesting question. Um, does anyone know what, what I mean? I didn't, I didn't hear. It depends on what you want. Go ahead, Neshle, Neltia. Depends how you waste it. So it's kind of a like big question. Is that money for you or what does that mean? Like, okay. So when I was saying, okay, you need to be wary about your money, it's partly because clearly when you're getting universal credit, you'll be getting it monthly. And yeah. some people may find it difficult to manage the money. So right. the reason the government decided to, or that's what they've said anyway, is that they wanted yeah. it monthly because that's how workers usually get it. So they think, oh, workers get it monthly, so why not universal credit? You get that monthly as well. That's the uh, that's what that's how they've sold it anyway. So, uh, so uh, it's it, it's quite a question. It, it makes me question because I thought it was that money is not for you, so you have to be careful what's in the money. Um, otherwise, it's um, oh, you mean do you mean like the money that you get? Are you supposed to pay your housing with it? Is this what you mean? No, I mean, like I said, like, um, it depends how you wish in it. So that's why, spending that's it. why spending it's spending. Yeah, oh, spending, spending it, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, any other thoughts? Yeah, so, so it really is all about how you're spending it because there's a limit to uh, what you can do is a limit to how you live on universal credit because universal credit we've established that it's means tested and secondly we established that when you're struggling you claim so thirdly it's crucial obviously you plan because the per month income you get under universal credit has to go a long way before universal credit was introduced, when you were under legacy benefit, you would get it every two weeks. And housing benefit would be paid by local council to the landlord. Your personal living cost for your food will be given to you directly, either as JSA, ESA, no need to worry. Yeah. So at least everything is covered. Now, your rent money is coming to you. Your personal food money is coming to you. Now you have to budget with that money. So I know that lots of landlords are saying, we're not getting our rent paid by the tenant because tenant has to worry about whether to feed himself or herself or, or pay the rent. Because yeah. the whole, so, yeah. Is that, is that, is that why a universal credit normally take the money straight away to the landlord, isn't it? But you're right that it, it, there is an option available where we talk about that it happens only in an exceptional situation where you know you're struggling financially and landlord says you are in rent arrears. so then the landlord and or you will be making an application for alternative payment arrangement then you'll be getting your landlord getting the housing element of universal credit direct to your landlord. Otherwise, in normal situation, you get universal credit that includes your housing benefit, that includes your child's cost, child benefit, that also includes your, you know, job seekers allowance or employment support. Allowance. Yeah. So it's one, one payment per for housing, for the children, for you. Hmm? Go ahead, Nelsia. You're no, on mute. Mm -hmm. If you if you claim for universal credit, uh, you are come down. Um, you are um for the. Uh, housing benefit as well. Oh no, council tax credit. Um, is a council tax credit is cover up your council tax straight away, isn't it? Um, very good question. No, council tax is 
separate from universal credit. Council tax is what you, well, actually, there isn't such a thing as council. Well, council tax is what council expects you to pay, council tax. When you're struggling financially, since we've identified that council tax is um, not means tested, you then apply to the council for council tax reduction, i.e., what that means, instead of you paying full council tax, they reduce the amount you pay based on your means. And that is linked with, not with DWP, but with the local council. And you in the council have a discussion and have a talk around that subject, while universal credit you talk to with Department of Work and Pension. Does that make sense? Right. So yeah. So uh, what's it called? So council tax credit is not um, working with universal tax credit. So they yeah. on their own, isn't it? So yes. If, if you need like a council tax deduction, you have to apply for that, is it? You apply absolutely. You apply with your local council. Yes, Robin, you're right. Wow. Yeah. Perfect. So, yes. Thank you. My pleasure. So let's move on to saving. Can, Go ahead. Isn't so it? yeah, can I ask you a question? Is something has happened with my for my sister? Ah, she is specific. Yeah. Okay, no, go ahead. I'll give it a go. It's fine. Yeah, she she got uh, universal credit, and they uh, she have one, one a child. And they do error for her calculate because normally they do 24 the, the month and 24 next month. Mm. And she, uh, they doing some error for her calculate. The, that month, she don't, don't get the full money. And she got only 250. And she have to live with 250 with the child and a single mom. And she asked uh, them, uh, ask, uh, them uh, they, they do an error because how can I uh, leave it with uh, 250, something like that. And they said, okay, we, we, we see the next, uh, next month. And she have to wait, she wait one month. Next month, they continue going uh, uh, same error. And she sent the message. And they said, okay, may, uh, we, we correct now. You can uh, uh, get the full, um, 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 uh, full, full payment next month. And she waited in two months, 250, 250. And she said, okay, I am uh, under uh, um, uh, debit with the other people or my pound. Can you give me back that money? It's, uh, it's not my error, it's your error. And they said, we, we're not working like that. Okay. You so, understand? Sorry, my English. <laughs> Nadifa, you're fine. You're Thank fine. you. I believe I'm understanding yeah. you. Now, there are a number of ways of dealing with this. Now, yeah. I will be talking about the uh, appeal process anyway, um, but, I, but I'll do it now and then I'll repeat later as well. Yeah. yeah. When there is an error made by DWP and you want to make a complaint against DWP, there is through a complaints and resolutions managers process. If you go on the Universal Credit Portal website, you will see, you, uh, you can find complaints resolutions manager. Let me show you this screen. Bear with me a second, let me just go back. Okay, so now here we are. Where is it? I'll, I'll come back to this anyway. Here's appeal process, standard appeal process here. Yours is here. Com complain to the independent complaint examiner and, in, and the examiner will investigate and the examiner will carry out an investigation. And if the outcome is not on your side, then you go talk to your MP about it. And MP will then go and take your query to the Parliamentary and Health Service Ombudsman. And if that can only be done once you've made a complaint and you had no resolution, and then it, you feel as though you're being hard done, then you take it to the uh, to take it to your MP, then we can take we, we can talk about parliamentary and health service ombudsman. That's one of many options, though. But we'll talk more about it later, anyway. Yeah. So now, um, um, go ahead. Uh, do you know the MP? I I heard about lots of people say about the MP. Yeah. But you know, um, when you when you to get contact with the MP, how how can you find them? Like, mm. how can you get contact with them? 
it well it's it's not very difficult obviously the pandemic may have changed a lot of things but from experience i understand that they mps usually have they have a surgery they usually have a surgery in a specific place once a month um usually around the town hall um if you google it find a mp google mp and find out where the surgeries are mm -hmm. Or you can have a, these days, knowing that everyone is locked down and things, probably you can have a phone interview, phone appointment to talk to your MP, um, to talk about wow. your problems. Because one of many responsibilities an MP has is to do casework. This, you're dealing with your problem is casework. Yeah? So you shouldn't, you shouldn't be shy, you shouldn't shy away from approaching an MP. But, I think Nadifa mentions uh, about her scissors problem. Her scissors problem, it, yeah. So first is really through this process. Where is it again? Um, it's, well, actually it's called uh, Complaint Resolutions Manager, but it's really is first independent complaint examiner and the examiner will investigate it. And the examiner is uh, independent, by the way. It's in no connection with DWP, but like an arbitrator. It doesn't mm -hmm. represent the um, claimant nor the WP, but we'll look at it objectively. And if you're unhappy with the outcome, you can contact your MP. That's one way, but there are other ways of complaining as well that I'll talk about a bit later. Um, however, moving on to universal credit and savings. Oh, yeah. You go ahead. Yeah? No, no, it's just the, uh, yeah, no, you're doing it, you're doing it. Thank yeah. you. <coughs> thank you, Robin. That's, oh, thank you, Robin. Um, now, in terms of universal credit and savings, I know we talked about earnings earlier, didn't we? So now it's about savings. I know I had a query about savings. Here is the thing. First 6,000 of uh, savings you have, these 6,000 is ignored. I.e. Department of Work and Pension doesn't care about first. Let's say you've got 7,000 uh, savings yeah, in the bank account. Now, out of 7,000, 6,000 pounds the DLP will ignore. However, between 6,000 and 16,000, um, if you have savings or capital saved up, they will take into consideration. If you have anything more than 16, you won't be getting universal credit, just to be clear, okay? Um, and in terms of calculation, every um, 250 pounds you have more than 6,000, they will deduct four pound 35p from your universal credit, okay? So just to give you an example, sorry, we don't like maths, I know, but we, I'm afraid numbers and maths, what can you do? <laughs> so 7,000 we got, that's the, you know, Barclays Bank, you got 7,000 crown, that's waiting there. You're loving it, every time you check your bank account, you just kiss the bank account because you got seven grand. Okay, so seven grand is there. What you generally will do, in that month, they will ignore 6,000, okay? Whilst they're claiming universal credit. They will ignore 6,000 pounds, and then we know 1,000 pound is left. They will calculate that. So they will look at 1,000 divided by 12, it's four, yeah? So four because it's 250 divided by, in a times four, and the so and so. And then four times 4.35, which is about 17 pound and 40 P. So what they'll do per month, they will deduct 17 pound 40 from your universal credit. Simple as that. Does that make sense? Yeah, I've got it. I've got, got it. it. I'm trying to make it as simple, but keep it simple. I mean, it's only like two hours. It's not like four days in universal credit course. So if you've got, if you got like a 7,000 in your bank account, they won't take the money, but you still get the universal credit, or they're going to stop the payment? Ah, no, no. Just to be clear, they will deduct from universal credit. So if you're if you've got a claim running, you know, monthly you get universal credit, depending upon your savings yeah. and capital, they will deduct um, universal credit. So it will you, the claim, the amount of money you get will be lower and lower and lower. Right. Like savings. for example, like if for example, like if universal credit pay you two hundred, they only pay you one hundred something and one hundred ninety yeah. something. Something like, yes, yeah. So, so if you have, let's say, okay. 6,250, yeah, for example, yeah. a month, they will remove 
four pound thirty five from Universal Credit. Mm. Because every so first six thousand is ignored. Yeah. So if you have let's say six thousand two hundred fifty, yeah, in that month in the bank account, <coughs> they will ignore first six thousand anyway. So then you got two hundred fifty left because total <laughs> savings you've got. Is, 6,250, for example. So they will ignore first 6,000. There's 250 pound capital left. It will count, take that into consideration. So every 250 you have more than 6,000, it will remove four pound 35 from your universal credit. So that's that. We leave can it I, from, yeah. I think can I make it clear? Go on. Um, do you know, uh, do you know, is this just mean for the people that are working that they can do the savings or all the people that get universal credit, uh, pay for universal credit, they all can have that savings, like 6,000 or 7,000, whatever is that? Nelson, I'm going to suggest, uh, Ripon, we can look at this in more detail in class. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, but, um, you know, they're good questions. But we, we will um, maybe continue with the Absolutely. other. Absolutely. Can I just try and sum, summarise this, I Go think, ahead. because I've only just understood it myself. So if you've got, um, if, you, if you have more than £15,000 savings, you don't get the credit. No. Nothing. Yeah. And for, for, for all of people that are saving for universal You can't get universal credit. You can't get universal credit. Over six. 16,000 pounds, yeah? Yes. And then you've got 6,000 pounds in your, if you've got less than 6,000 pounds, they don't look at that. You get you get your full universal credit, yes. yeah? When you're only, when we're talking about savings, yeah? Yes. Um, right? So if I've got 5,500 pounds, that's fine. They're not looking at my savings. They're not looking into that. Yeah? Because but if I have like, anything between six yeah. and 16,000 pounds, Every little bit more that you have over six thousand pounds, yes. they're deducting every two hundred and fifty pounds. I add. Yes, yes, that's it. Thirty-five. That's brilliant. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, let's move on. Now, yeah, please. I heard from people outside. That's why I want. To <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Right. Now, I want you to do case studies. Now, I want two teams. One to be Smith family. The other one is Layla and Majni, um, to talk about um, and find out okay if they can okay what benefits can they still continue to get and can't get and can they claim you see if they can what advice would you personally give them Ripon, i've got another question or ask go ahead I, I think we may have missed the bit where we just thought, you know if you're working yeah mm. how much money can you be earning there isn't a limit as to how much you can earn because, because if you're working, if you're, let's say, working, I mean, there is a, a limit, I guess. The, the overall limit is 20,000. Um, however, there is no one size fits all, but the benefit cap, if you, I know someone, a person asked, is 441 pound per week, which includes your housing, your, chi your child element, as well as your personal allowance, but it doesn't include your childcare. Got childcare is separate. Got childcare. But if I'm earning like, all right. So if me, if I'm earning sixteen thousand pounds and my partner's earning twenty thousand pounds, like, can I? If you're combining both together, you see the income is already high. Mm -hmm. so, so what yeah. is that income thing? So in from top of my head, I think it's twenty six thousand. However, okay. it does, com, yeah. So how, yeah. However, it does depend on where you live because living in London is more expensive compared to outside of London. Mm -hmm. But usually, people, um, unless you are in exceptional circumstances, you don't necessarily fit the benefit yeah. cap anyway. I mean, we can show them where they can check whether they're eligible. But I just I think it's good to have a a a, a, a rough idea. You know about yeah. what how much money we're talking about. So, so four hundred forty-one used to be five hundred pound benefit cap, but it's changed since to, to uh, twenty sixteen. Um, it's gone down to four hundred forty-one per week, which includes your rent payment, your kid looking after your children, and also your for your own living. No, but what I mean is your income, your work income. 
Yeah. So, I mean, the interesting thing is when you're working, that um, cap is removed because it doesn't really apply. No. However, it's more about tapering away. So the more you earn, it will, it will taper away. So gradually mm -hmm. wither away. Mm -hmm. I know that makes um, sense. And when does the taper apply? So if I'm earning, if my f family, like me and my partner are earning 50,000 pounds, no, I, I, then you put, you won't be, it's probably if you combine both together, if you're earning, let's say, near to 30, you probably won't be getting it. Okay, so around 30,000 pounds. If you're like earning it. less than that, maybe there's a chance. Maybe. Um, but in terms of for you to get a proper analysis, what I suggest you do is do a benefit calculator on Turn to Us. Mm -hmm. Turn to us benefit calculator, it will tell you exactly based on a number of factors, your disability, your personal savings that you might have, your existing income, your childcare needs, your child benefit, child tax credit, if you're working or not working, all those things combined will be decided. That's why it's quite complicated to go. The moment you have disability, you can forget about the benefit cap, for example. So that's why. However, I want you to do this case study. Um, and by the way, this workshop is not advice to a specific individual. It's about general. If it's about a specific individual, I need to spend an hour and a half with one person. <laughs> okay. So now, one, one will do with Smith family. The other will do with Leila and Majni. Will you send us the... Oh, yeah, I'll do Please just that, yes. And now, very much like, thank you. Would you like to uh, would you like breakout rooms again? Yes, please. Good. So let's have the same breakout rooms. And how much time should we have? I think with this one again, probably about I, I would say seven minutes. Great. So Anne, will you please set your timer? I will check as well. So let's go to breakout rooms. Sec. So here's one he goes. So group one will do? The first one, mm -hmm. a Smith family, and mm -hmm. the other one is Leila and Mashani. Just like before, I will be keeping my mouth closed. <laughs> Let me try and find it. All right. Oh, this is like, I feel like we're doing like some kind of exam. Um, <laughs> I haven't had to think so much for months. Well, that's good. <laughs> okay, everyone. Um, who can read? Linda, do you want to read this? Layla and Mondru, please. Yes. Hello. Um, hello, everyone. I I have I one question. In my case, oh, I worked oh, Layla, for Layla, years. Sorry, I was gonna. Sorry, I was asking you if you could read this one. We're still got gonna have time for questions later. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, I'm sorry. Can you read this one for us, please? Layla and Monju. All right, don't worry, I'll ask somebody else. Um, Aika. Who? Aika. Ah, Mariana, yeah, go on, please, thank you. Uh, Smith family, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. No, no, the other one, Leila and Monju, ah, we're doing this okay. one. Uh, Leila and Mo Mojno. Mojno is 68 and Leisa, Leila is 50. Mojno gets pension credit state pension, housing benefit, full council ta tax support. They currently live in separate flats. Leila lives in Barking and Mojno lives in Newham. They are in love. They are thinking whether they should move in together. If they do, what benefit will have to apply? 
uh, and problems will they will there be? And what problems? Yeah. Oh, okay. Good, Mariana. What about the typo? No, 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 it's fine. One more time, Mariana, so we get it in our head. Is this one one more time? Mm-hmm. <laughs> or do okay. you want me to... Uh, Mojno is 68 and Leila is uh, 50. Mojno gets pension credit, state pension, housing benefit, full council tax support. They currently live in separate flats. Leila lives in Barking and Mojno lives in New- Newham. They are in love. They are thinking whether they should move in together. If they do, what benefit will have to apply and problems will there be? Mm-hmm. When you say, Ripon, what benefit will have to apply? What do you mean? What, what benefit are they entitled to, really? Ah, okay. will, they be, well, will they be able to apply? Sorry, I, I typed okay. it this morning. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, that's no, fine. OK, so we understand the situation, I think. So what benefits can they apply for? And are there going to be any problems? So at the moment, Mojnu gets these benefits. Does Layla get anything? Uh, no, no. We don't know that. No. Child credits. Does Layla get child? How do you know Layla has child credits? No, no it's only Mojnu gets pension credit. When they pension house benefit for council tax. So Lila live in Barking. Mm. No, Lila didn't claim for anything. He's not saying anything about Lila here. Mm. It's just say that they in love and they thinking about to meet together. What sh- what should they do? So I guess the question the question is whether. I guess Mon- Mojnu's benefits are going to be affected. But hold on, Ripon, how would we know? Um, a very good question. So first thing is first, you need to identify if it's means-tested benefit, what means-tested can they get? If it's non-means-tested, what non-means-tested can they get? And uh-huh. will they be a couple? If they're a couple, what can they get? Based on the sheet that I gave you. So we don't know if Mojnu's working or anything. So that's something you can ask. Let's assume she, because she's, okay, she's of working age. Ah, yeah. okay. So what can she get? So, so she's unemployed. Let's say she's unemployed, yeah? Okay, let's say she's unemployed. And also think about if she's employed, which benefits can she get of okay. working age? Both of them. Couple pension, is that a pension? <laughs> I think they can apply for a house together, a uh, house and benefits. And um, I think he can reapply for all his benefits and see which ones he can get. Hmm. I mean, the, the pension credit, that won't be affected. His one won't be affected. Is that right? Or no, the state... Oh, God, I don't know. What do we say? The pension credit was non-means tested, huh? Yeah, yeah exactly. And the state pension. Pension credit. Hmm. So take housing benefit and council tax. Housing oh, benefit. And council tax is a pick. Both of them. Okay, and this so time. Both yes. of them. Um, yes. Because it's getting a couple. When you get in a couple, the friend can yeah, uh, enjoy playing. playing. Um, and housing benefit you can share it, and council tax you can share it. Didn't don't what share it? Yeah, you should pay. Example: If you have a child uh, mm. starting to work, uh, they mm. living with you, and you are in a, a patient or you are in a disability or something look like that. The government asking for your child pay the mm. little bit about the rent or council tax. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Quite yeah. the benefit, uh, housing benefit and council tax. I say yes, it's a benefit and child benefit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what are there going to be any problems? Well, I guess 
I don't think so for patient credit, state pension, but I think just the uh, housing the benefit tax. and council tax, both of them. That would be affected, yeah. Yeah, affected oh, by... But the yeah. thing is, so like if, so imagine, imagine um, Leila isn't working, yeah? She's not working. Um, yeah. Then, because she would have to, oh, I don't know, like, because she would have, if she wants to claim a benefit, well, they're going to have to have the housing benefit and council tax um, assessed together, yeah? Yes, yeah. yeah. And if so you she make a joint, joint claim. Working, they kind of expect, you know, she would, she would have to, I don't know, would it be? No, would, if she working, she affects house benefit and council tax. If she doesn't work in, I mm. didn't think so, affect housing benefit and council tax. But, uh, but if they're together, don't they have to look at so if she if she isn't but, working and she claims universal credit yeah income will, will it affect his housing benefit i don't know well, uh, benefit yeah she's not working no it's not working she she she's okay. working yes i think yeah who, who's, the, who's, the, benefit. who's being assessed though for the housing benefit it can't just be only him. It must be both of them, yeah? Yes. Yeah. So what if she, you know, they say you've got to look for this many jobs and she doesn't do it and they stop her benefits? Will it affect his housing benefit? I think, no, Robin. I think they both have the right to apply for it. Um because if she's not working and he is of the um, uh, claiming the benefit for pension, I think both of them have the right to to apply for it. And it just and, and then it depends of if he gets a job or not, then probably can be removed part of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any I other thoughts? I think I think it's Monu is received only house benefit and credit uh, pension and pension credit. And the other, Laila, received child credit and the benefit of 12, benefit, where, house where, benefit. Where, where are you reading? Are we looking, Linda, we're looking at this one at the bottom here, um, the second one, not the top one. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's why. So when there's no, nobody no children. about children here. Yeah. Okay, no children, the second one. Mm -hmm. It's only received the, the um, pension credit and uh, housing benefits mm -hmm. as well. Um, hmm. I, I see. I mean, do you, I mean, the, my other question is: Do you have to tell them? Do you have to tell them if somebody, if your partner moves in with you? Yes, you yeah, have to tell yeah, them. Okay. Yes, yes. yes. You, you're doing an and changing just change, change, change of circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You have to do that. You know. Well, how long? What within a month? Immediately? When? No, Four you have weeks, one month time to, <laughs> you get to uh, see if it works. <laughs> you have one month time to to uh, doing that. Uh, change your circumstance. Okay. All right, we're going to be yes, moved on. Yeah. Okay. Um. Right. We've got one more minute. Lucy's given us any other thoughts on this one. Is somebody they willing should, to yeah, go on? They, they should stay separated and meet on weekends, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> yeah, but then they're paying two rents, aren't they? Well, maybe, yeah. <laughs> no, I think that entitled to all the benefits that they claim um, is just that uh, they may get a little bit less for living together in, in regards to the council support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, if the, if she's not, well, no, but if you're unemployed, they should still get the full council tax, no? Um, yeah, but it depends if you actually are in age working and then you have have to find the job, basically. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's, yeah. it's your obligation. Mm. So if you don't, then you lose that. <laughs> ah, sorry. Good. So everyone is back. Did you have enough time? Yeah. I gave a little yes, bit we had. Time because, uh, 
because uh, the, the one room didn't picture first. Okay, um, creeper, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, Carla, Anna, can you explain you. the discussion from our room when we get to it? Um, sure, sorry, Lucy. Uh, I did send it on the chat section, you know, the, the, the sheet. But I think that once you're in the breakout room, it's you. It we can't access it. That's the problem. Ah, uh, you didn't have it. Ooh. We'll We've go for it anyway. We'll go gone. for it. So I came into your room and took a screenshot, and then. Ah, I see. Oh, <laughs> oh. Um, they, they got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So who wants to go for for the first one? Oh, that's strange. I've never noticed that book before. Um, so does anyone want to share the sheet? I I will. Look, this is what we, we, this was the discussion. We okay, had. great, great. Yeah. So, of course, we were, yeah, the question, I don't know if others from Farouz, Leanne, <laughs> want to. Um, Anne, excuse me, Anne. Anne, parlez yeah. français? Uh, oui. Okay. Ah, j'ai une question en fait parce que là je suis embêtée, je parle pas anglais encore. Ah d'accord. Euh, Est-ce que je peux vous poser une question? Euh, oui, mais il vaut mieux le mettre dans le chat. Ah, je je vois pas où c'est. C'est la première fois que je m'inscris dedans. Euh, je suis, je fais comment? Je le fais, je l'écris en français. Si je... Et après... Okay, so are we now? Let's go yeah. to uh, my group. Uh, we think uh, because his uh, situation is getting worse because he got the third children and the husband working the part time job. We think yeah. he still have got a housing benefit, uh, uh, children benefit, C, uh, C, CTC and the WTC. We think uh, if you keep uh, applied, mm -hmm. uh, we you uh, you see maybe lost the uh, income score. Mm -hmm. Very good one. Okay, let me just go through it. So they're currently getting income. They currently get income support. They get income support because they're the household is in low income and uh, uh, someone is caring for children, hence income support. Housing benefit because, uh, uh, again, uh, rent uh, uh, income is low, so you need to pay for your rent, so housing benefit. They're getting child benefit. We've already established um, if you have children, you get child benefit. So um, it's my mistake. I should have said a council tax, uh, sorry, um, child tax credit and the workings tax credit. These are tax credits that you get from HMRC and the council tax support you get from the council because of his low income plus salary because he's working part time. The question is, if they, if, if another child is due shortly, can they get, what, can, what else can they get? That's the issue, isn't it? Or will there be a change in their circumstance? So what answer have you got for me? He still caught. I think, uh, in my opinion, uh, he still continues to get. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So if they, if there's a baby born, yes, they will carry on getting income support. Yes, they will carry on getting housing benefit. Yes, they'll carry on getting child benefit. Um, but yes, they'll be getting um, working tax credit, child tax credit and council tax support, but they won't be getting it for three people. They will still be getting for two people. What I'm sorry, they'll be getting it for two children, not three. Do you know why? Yeah, you know uh, yeah why? because it's, uh, she's pregnant. Third kid, third, third, kid, third kid is not entitled to benefit. So, so when the third child is born, what's yeah. going yeah. to be the income for third child? Yeah. Do you see? Yeah. The reason I'm stating this is, and I, I, I don't know if you know it, but I want to, I want to kind of know, tell you that there is, as part of go current government reform, current government change, if you have uh -huh. a third child, you won't get benefit for a third child. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's, the, that's why I wanted to tell you. And the other thing is, 
if you do change to universal credit, it, the rule will exactly be the same. You'll be getting your child element for two. Um, you'll get your housing element for your rent. You would also get your um, um, personal allowance for income support. And they will take into account your, the husband's salary through you know, every pound he earns. They will take into consideration 63p, as you know. That's how they'll do it. So I want to just kind of have that just for the sake of really for you to get familiar. And again, they'll carry on getting council tax support because council tax support is linked with the council and housing benefit, uh, well, universal housing benefit is also with the council. Universal credit, which includes um, child element, working element and um, housing element will be by DWP. All right. Um, Ruben, um, <coughs> do you know, uh, are, are, we, are people still available to play for child tax credit? Because what I know is uh, they say that child, child tax credit is, is not anymore um, available to play because they were covered up with universal credit. That is true. You're not allowed to claim child tax credit and or working tax credit. Um, and once you move away from child tax credit and working tax credit and claim universal credit, you can't go back to child tax credit and working tax credit. And the other thing is, as you know, child tax credit and working tax credit is administered, I mean, organized by HMRC. HMRC deals with tax and DWP deals with universal credit. They're two separate ones. Yeah, and then, um, so what's the right for you to claim for child tax credit? And then if you already got universal credit, you're not entitled to... No, you're right. You're not entitled to... So right. what's that difference? The, when you're claiming child tax credit, you're, you're, when you're claiming child tax credit, you're claiming it under old benefit system. So the old benefit system where you're getting your child tax credit. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, and so the new system, by the way, the old system is called legacy system. Now, any new claims you make will be new claims, obviously. Legacy. This would, will come under universal credit where you'll be claiming child element for a child, which replaces child tax credit, and personal allowance for you personally which replaces job seekers allowance and employment support allowance and housing element that replaces a housing benefit that in the past you claim with the local council. Is that okay? Yes. <laughs> Get familiar yeah. with the basics yeah. only. Now it's all about the <coughs> yeah. are, are, are there any people who are claiming universal credit but who made the new, if you were getting child tax credits hmm. and then you make a universal credit claim now, will it be moved? Will the child tax credit stop? And yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. So, the, so, yeah. So, if you make a universal credit claim now and you have a child tax credit with the HMRC, your child tax credit will stop straight away. Stop short. Yeah. I think it's happened to me three years ago. Oh, no. I'm the questioning about like, the what's the difference uh, between child tax credit. Okay, so, oh. yeah. I don't understand this. Uh, this is not fair. They have more children, but this high, uh, has less money. That's how it is. You wanted to know about benefits? I'm giving you the knowledge. Oh. <laughs> what else can I give you? Can I have a question, please? Now, the next case study, <laughs> Leila and Majni, the love is made in heaven. Oh, no, that? I have a question about uh, Leila and Majni. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, I have a question about universal credit. Oh, go ahead. Okay. I saw on the news that the universal credit will pay thousand pounds, I think two months ago. So I want to know if they are still paying thousand pounds or not. That sorry. time was quarantine. Sorry, um, sorry, could you repeat that question for me? Yeah. The thing that you saw on the... Oh. Go ahead. Yeah, I saw on the news 
that universal credit will pay thousand pound. I think two months ago. So I want to know if they are still paying or not. Yes, they're paying. They're paying up to, uh, if, oh, girl, don't quote me on this. Um, yeah, yeah they ca they're carrying on, I think, up to September, but I could be wrong, but they're still paying, yes. There was a what campaign. do you mean paying a thousand pounds? What, what, what thousand she pounds? means, what's the, what's the there is a top up, basically, tw top, top up um, 20 pounds per week, oh. which is mm. kind of roughly works out a thousand pounds a month, a thousand pounds a year, really, is because, uh, you know, once the pandemic kicked in, um, now those who used to work have lost their jobs. Why? So the government policy was to increase uh, uh, support uh, by twenty pounds per week on top of your existing claim. So if you were getting job seekers allowance, you get seventy three ten. Twenty pound on top would be ninety three ten. So we better off rather than being hard hit bad. And that's the policy as a result of the pandemic. Mm. Yeah, you know, I don't think they were doing it for the legacy benefits, only for you. They won't. Absolutely. They were yeah. not doing it. They're, they're doing it for working tax credit. Mm -hmm. um, they're not doing it for job seekers allowance and employment support allowance. Mm -hmm. But you're right. We're well, not doing it for um, um, job seekers allowance. And, but they're doing it for working tax credit. And just everyone, well, we'll let you know well, through your teachers. There is a campaign to make sure that they don't reduce it. Yes. So at the moment, it's until September or there was a campaign and then they increased it till yes. September. Yes. We need to kind of keep campaigning unless all yes. it will go <coughs> back down by 20 pounds. Um, yes. Richard, um, Sorry, I know. They, they... Hold on, hold on, hold on, one at a time. Um, let's go with Mariana. She's got a hand up and then they'll see it. Mariana? I have a question, uh, something, another topic. Um, I'm, I'm getting a universal credit, but I'm uh, maternity leaving. In this month, my maternity is, will be finished. And the universal credit every day send it me uh, a completed note fit. But I'm not sick, my baby no, but I, I not understand why. Mm -hmm. And I, I could not start to work because my baby, he's breastfeeding and he's a little bit uh, noisy, I, I can start working. W what can I do? Now, um, now clearly, ma well, maternity payment is for a specific period of time. Um, and it's, don't forget, it's non means tested. You get it because of the situation. So now, once your maternity pay comes to an end, and the question is what, I mean, there are two ways actually. If maternity pay is not covering enough for you, can, you can top it up with UC. You can do that. Or once maternity payment comes to an end, you can claim, um, do you remember I was talking about income support that you used to get in old benefit? Now you can get it now for your personal allowance, your child allowance, as well as your rent, those things will be covered. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So it's all about moving from one to the other once maternity allowance comes to an end. What do you do next? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, so I know Linda, you've Linda's been waiting for this okay, question. Okay, go ahead. Time. Go ahead, Linda. Hello, okay. uh, Ripon. Hello, everyone. Hi, Linda. Um, my my question in my case is um in this moment it's not working, but um, before I working four years in the hotel, mm. it's possible to continue to pay um, the tax for when I have uh, 60 years uh, old to able to collect uh, in the future my, my pension credits. So now, could you, what is the question? But can she make voluntary contributions, basically? Yes, the contribution, yeah. Right, so now when it comes to the voluntary contributions, I mean, first things first is how much you're earning. So what is your existing income? If you are, let's say, an employee, you're, obviously you can contribute towards your state pension, you know, state pension where you contribute, so will your employer, if you are employee. If you are self-employed, yes, you can voluntarily pay to HMRC, you can do that. 
Um, if you just Google it, say self-employed, pension contribution, it should take you to the right directions anyway. That's not a problem. Uh, but I can't exactly remember the actual naming of it. It's something like, I don't know, NC3 form or something you need to fill in, right? Something like that, national contribution form for self-employed, you can do that. However, whether the question is whether it would impact you receiving pension credit or not, it really doesn't make much of a difference because if your state pension is the basic, minimum is what you get your state pension, yeah? And then pension credit is meant to top you up if your income is low anyway, because it's means tested. However, if you've got savings elsewhere, pension, private pensions, those things will be taken into consideration to reduce pension credit payment or not anyway. So yeah, so those are things that may matter because you're looking for pension credit that is means tested. If you have savings, i.e. private pension, that will reduce the amount of pension credit you get anyway. If you've contributed towards state pension, you've contributed towards state pension, some people may have contributed for 30, 40 years, as a result, you know how much state pension you're getting. So on the whole, state pension, pension credit, um, and private pension will make up your pension on the whole. It will be reduction in your pension credit based on how much private pension there is. Um, is that complicated or is that okay? It's super complicated. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Did you, did, Linda, Linda, did you understand? I wasn't really listening. I'm so sorry. sorry but... I know, because it's just... <laughs> Because <laughs> there's so many things, it's quite difficult. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But to answer your question simply, yes, you can contribute if you are self employed. And if you're an employee now, you're employed. No, if she's unemployed. If she's unemployed. Oh, then, wait, look, yes. then, then you don't need to worry. If you're unemployed, um, you don't need to worry about paying anything anyway. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Because, I mean, where, if you're unemployed, uh, you're on bare minimum. Why would you want to pay any towards it? Then you'd be struggling yourself. Mm. So, I don't know, because I know someone like a domestic worker and she was really worried about this. She was worried that she, if she didn't pay her national insurance, then mm. she wouldn't be able to claim the pension. Um, it, yes, um, state pension is, obviously that's what we're talking about. But in the end, if you can't afford it, you can't afford it. Just like, let's say, when we talked about contributory JSA and contributory ESA, if you remember, is mm. based on how much contribution do you make mm. also, or how long. Mm -hmm. Just by making contribution for two years, it's not going to make a difference if you're going to claim ex state pension. Once you retire, that should carry on for, I don't know, another 20 years. So, so basically, yeah. she can pay if she can? Yes. Oh, yes. And how, how much will she lose if she hasn't been paying it? Well, it's just that her state pension will be reduced. However, pension credit should top it up. Ah, okay. So in the end, it won't make yeah. a difference overall? Yes. Okay. So the pension so the, the... credit will top it up. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. Sorry. So, so... Um, Ripon, we've got more Thank questions. You. Should we carry on? I don't know. I, if you want to know about the legal processes, we have to carry on. We we'll leave the rest of questions in the end. How about this? Okay, all right, Marisol, please, thank you. Yeah, because there's a we have a lot to go through because we are still in the middle of it and I might as well finish it all so you'll get a full picture, yeah? Okay. So, yeah, so we, shall we then move away from Leila and Majmi and move on to other stuff? Because we've got a lot to go through. I want you to benefit, uh, I want you to get the concepts first and then the detail later. It will help you anyway, it's for your benefit. So we talked about case studies. Now, obviously, I know a few people already talked about it in a sense of what happened when your circumstances change. I think it was Neltia who mentioned about child tax credit, um, uh, or, or, or I'm not sure others have mentioned where, what happened yeah, when, yeah, when it, now there is a, here's a, an interesting scenario that is worth you knowing. And that is yeah. you don't need to change from work and tax credit and or work to child tax credit if you have another child. Plus, well, I didn't get that. Um... I'll, I'll, yeah, so it is worth, this is worth, worth you knowing. For example, if you have one child, yeah? Yeah, no, yeah. 
currently, the rule is you are currently receiving child tax credit and or working tax credit, okay? If you're in receipt of child tax credit and, and let's say or working tax credit, yeah, and you have one child, you're getting it for child tax credit, one child, ta child tax credit, okay? Now you have another child. The question is, although there is change of circumstances, does that mean you have to claim universal credit? I say you don't. The reason being is because since you are in receipt of child tax credit and child tax credit is administered by HMRC, you notify HMRC and not DWP of the change of circumstances instead of you making a fresh claim. Do you see? Because it currently, uh, yeah. you have a claim with HMRC for one child. Um, you just tell them, look, the change of circumstances. Can you add another name, please? Here's another child. So therefore, you don't need to worry about getting another claim because you're already in old benefit. Now you've got another child. Make sure you tell HMRC that will do the job. Okay? Sure. Um, yeah, that's one thing. Now the other thing is, if you already have a housing benefit claim with the local council, yeah, and you're moving from one property to another, yeah, you don't need to notify DWP, just notify the council about your certain change of property within the borough, okay? Yes. Only if you're, if you're yeah, staying yeah. in the borough. Yes. Because the same. One, local... Yeah, yeah. If you go outside the borough, they won't have a housing benefit account or claim. So you have to start fresh and they will say, we don't know you, go and make a fresh claim. With universal credit. Wow. Yes. Do you see? Now, there are exceptions, obviously, where you don't have to claim a, a universal credit for your housing element anyway, for your rent. If you are in temporary accommodation provided by local council or charities because of domestic violence and other things. Okay? So there we go. Yeah, that's why. Why are you showing that screen there? Sorry, I wasn't sure. That's, I just want to go through that change of certain change of circumstances doesn't mean you have to make a claim for UC. That's oh, fine. maybe we're not seeing the presentation. Oh. We've just had this like um, file screen. Oh, right. oh, oh sorry. Uh, maybe I'm not actually. Let's have a look. Oh, is this. Uh, sorry, we should have said earlier. How about this one? Oh, yeah, now we can see it. Yeah, sorry about this. Uh, yeah, my fault. Okay. Uh, yeah, here we go. So here we go. Child tax credit, working tax credit, moving within the borough and specified or temporary accommodation. Okay, so yeah, we we'll, now we're moving at, at options available when you're financially struggling. Yeah, so in a sense, suddenly you find that you've claimed universal credit, but you might be in rent arrears and council tax arrears, or your friends might be in rent arrears and council tax arrears. What do you do? So I'm I, so I'm, I'm now changing from talking about universal credit to um, other support that are available that are linked with universal credit, okay? So now let's say, for example, if you're struggling financially and you have already opened a claim for universal credit, you're waiting for the first payment, you can claim for advance payment. So does anyone know, what has anyone claimed or knows about advance payment? I, I know about that, but I never claim about it. Um, oh, but yeah. someone has told me about advance, yeah, advance uh, credit. Like if you struggle with money, they can like yeah. borrow a money from you and then they're gonna um, take yeah, it. Yeah, you're right. But back. it is like they're like yeah. lending Actually, you money, but they take it back again, don't they? Yeah, lending money, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah, the that's problem. Yes, so basically, yes, you can take it now. However, when you get your first payment, from then on, they'll deduct percentage of your income to pay off advance payment. So that's what advance payment is all about. You, well, you're taking the money now, but when you get your first payment and from then on, they'll deduct a bit from your existing yeah. universal credit claim. That's what it is. That's, that, that is what you call applying for an advance payment. That's but, one. But do it if you need to do it. Huh? Well, like, I would, I mean, if you're doing it, you're struggling financially anyway. But, you know, yeah. So I, <laughs> I would say no, but 
those are the options that are available. Yeah. Oh, you would say don't do it. I mean, look, it's all, I wouldn't, it's all, there is no one size fits all. So even if you do do it, you still have to pay it back and they'll take the money from your existing claim anyway. So you need just need to bear in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other one is alternative payment um, arrangement. Go ahead. Um, so, um, no, you, you, you can. Okay. Come to so the service. other is alternative payment arrangement. This is where, where, let's say, you're struggling to pay your rent and landlords and or tenants uh, approach the WP to say, can you please pay the housing element of universal credit to the landlord, not to me because I'm having problem with budgeting my money or in rent arrears. So that's what it is. That's where it goes directly to the landlord. I now, love to do that. Sorry? I love to do that one, so I'm not in trouble. Yeah, just in contact. So if I, yeah, that's fine. Contact um, WP, you should be able to do it. Now, there are other options that, to me, and one is discretionary housing payments. This is when you have to prove that you are in receipt of benefits and uh, you're struggling with your benefit and you can apply for discretionary housing payment. Uh, do bear in mind, the title itself kind of says it is discretionary. It's up to the local council to uh, use its discretion to give you the money for a sh short period of time, not indefinitely, for a short period of time. So that's one avenue to clear off your rent and rent arrears. But every council has its own policy about yeah, when they absolutely. will give it. <laughs> and like Ripon says, you know, they won't keep doing it. Or if they feel like it's your housing situation is not sustainable. Like they, they say, basically, if you're coming and asking for this every, yeah. every three months, then no, you need to find, we'll help you find somewhere else that you can afford. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And some will cover arrears, money that, you know, from before, some won't. It depends on the council. Yeah, and I just want to add to that. Sometimes, annoyingly, they may also include council tax discount with discretionary mm -hmm. housing payment. So, moving down, you see Section 13A, Local Government and Finance Act, that basically says that, yes, legally, you should be paying certain amount based on your means. However, because you're in financial hardship, we will reduce it further or write off further, but you have to apply for it. And it is also means tested as well as other things such as your health and disability. And so, so that's worth thinking about anyway. And of course, we all know there's been a huge pandemic uh, of people queuing up for food bank. It becomes a normal now. So there will be an occasion where you have to think about going for food banks and getting hold of vouchers. Now, we are moving to appeals. How do you appeal? Now, I know a few people have raised it. There are three separate ways of challenging GWP. Uh, and there is no one size fits all. However, the standard way, i.e. any decision GWP makes, um, where it says, oh, we have decided that you, we're gonna sanction you, for example, and here, he, and uh, therefore you'll be getting your money. No. So the moment they make a decision and you've got it in writing or um, in confirmation, you have the right to challenge them if you think the decision is unfair. And the standard process, as you can see here, if you think the office dealing with your claim has made an error uh, of important evidence, disagreed with the reasons for the decision, or you want to, the decision to be looked again, you need to apply against the decision of the WP within a month of them giving you the reason, yeah? And here we are, and the standard legal process is mandatory reconsideration. So you're making an illegal aid. So yeah, local citizen advice can help you with that. First, the social security tribunal, which is where an independent tribunal will look at the decision, original decision of the WP to see whether it's fair or not and they will look at it in a fresh pair of eyes and the tribunal is very much like an inquiry really. You have three people, professionals, looking at it, 
no connection with DWP, they will independently assess based on your situation to see whether they made a mistake, whether their original decision was fair or not. Um, however, Ripple, is there one in between after a monetary reconsideration? Isn't there an appeal? Ah, yes, you appeal to the first year social security tribunal. Oh, so the oh, okay, so that is the appeal. The first, yeah. Year. So first, you say I want you to look into it again, monetary reconsideration. I mean, you can request for the reason and then appeal to for, as a mandatory consideration. No problem. However, in terms of legal channels, first is mandatory. I say I I want you to look into it again, please. Mm -hmm. Here is my mm -hmm. appeal, and if you're not happy with it, then you you go to an independent tribunal, first year social security tribunal. They will look at you the facts of the case again, look at the decision made by the DWP, whether the decision is, is fair. Uh, so it's all facts driven along with the rules and uh, no legal aid. However, when you see second year tribunal, this is all about whether the <coughs> reasoning is rational, logical, and legally correct or not. It's like a, you can only appeal based on the court's getting legally wrong. So you need a lawyer in and you can get legal aid for that. The second option, I know we covered it earlier, is where you make a complaint to the independent complaint examiner and the examiner will investigate and the examiner is impartial, no connection with GWP, nor with the individual. And the examiner will investigate it. And if you are happy with the outcome, it's great. If you're not happy with it, and you have to go take your complaint to your local MP and the local MP will take your case to the Parliamentary and Health Service Ombudsman. When, um, when do you do a, a reconsideration? When do you do a complaint? Ah, uh, so now it depends upon the situation. The case that one of the individuals actually who raised here about, you know, overpayment, that would be complaint. Where there's a delay in- the Underpayment, the underpayment. Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. And I think, I, I can't remember exactly. That would be through this process where it took them so long to respond. And as a result, she, she's been hard hit. Her friend's been hard hit. I think sister, I think, has been hard hit by it. That would be through a complaint process here. Now, finally, it's, uh, it, finally, you will, uh, here we go, there's a phone number for that. Finally, I think I didn't add that, did I? Okay, finally, it's really is the judicial review, whereby you need a legal expert who will um, take your case to the High Court uh, um, on the basis that either DWP's decision was unlawful, illegal, or completely irrational, as well as the fact that there is no any other avenues available for you. So then you can take it to the High Court um, now, to understand about High Court and other stuff, I want you to read this, go for another uh, breakout, and uh, come back. Oh, Ripon, I don't know that we've got time, huh? Well, then in this case, that's how Universal Credit Claim Portal looks like. Yeah. It, I mean, I think, I mean, hopefully we we're not going to get to a judicial review, but I think if any of our students are really at that situation and none of the complaints are working, then we'll yeah. help you find Get that yeah. Can I ask you one question, please? Go ahead. Can we have uh, um, the copy what you show us now and, and, um, and how to complain and something like that? I want to give my sisters so that is it possible. Rapi, if you put the WhatsApp group, please. Abs I will actually, if you know, mm -hmm. ask your sister to go on Universal Credit uh, Portal on the. Yeah, portal. Portal for Complaint Resolutions Manager. That's all she has to do. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. So she can, Thanks, do, she can make the complaint, yeah. She can make the complaint through her portal. That's what she should be doing. Okay, thank you. That's fine. Um, so, and um, can we just take Marisol's um, question? Go ahead. Hold on, Marisol. Thank you so much. Um, I have a question about the universal credit uh, mm -hmm. because I don't know if um, the um, student finance uh, can uh, affect the my universal credit. The, uh, the question here is whether student finance will affect your universal credit. First thing is first, 
are you a, a, what kind of education are you? Are you at university? Um, um, I, I, I am in a course for accounting now because I, I want to improve my, my life still because I work uh, always by, as a cleaner. And now I, I, I am worried about if I can uh, apply for a student finance or no, because I am an employer. Okay, so from the perspective of Department of Work and Pension, the, there are a number of issues this course raised, your query raised. First, what is your status? Are you, are you bound by claim and commitment? Do you remember when I started with Universal Credit, if you are a person of under uh, pension age or of working age and you have no health problems, so therefore you're bound by work commitment or claimant commitment. And the claimant commitment says you should be, for example, looking for work and so on, so on, so on, yeah? And you should be available for work and so on, so on, so on. And studying as you do, where you be formally be a student. I mean, unless you have disability, there are certain exemptions where you, where if you're a carer, if you are, um, if, you, if you have health issues, then you can claim or you can claim student finance with UC in exceptional circumstances. But if you're currently in receipt of universal credit uh, uh, credit and you have claim and commitment, and then you claim universal you claim student finance, that will be seen firstly as income. Secondly, it will be seen that you, you may be uh, going against claim and commitment. So it's very likely they will say you've been. It's, a, it's, there's a, it's usually about the amount of hours as well, isn't it? Yes. Your course, yes. huh? Because if if it's like a full time course, then you're not available yeah. to work. Absolutely, that's yes. basically it. Yes. So then you're not doing the claim and commitment. So the 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 job related bit mm. of your you. So you still can get the housing, yeah. You might still get the housing bit. You might get the no. Um, no, I go so ahead. I I I work uh, working as a volunteer uh, now, uh, so um, I have a child, and I need to care my child. So for me, for example, it's important to uh, get another options. So yeah. if I can't apply. Um, so for me, for example, is uh, it uh, important because I I I can't uh, work at the moment if, because if I I am studying, I am uh, uh, take care of my child and I can I can uh, work. How is the child? Uh, I have two. Uh, the the older one is uh, 89 but this is um, he go to home but my child my child have uh, is um, 11 okay because usually I mean obviously if, um, what they usually do uh, due to pandemic things may have changed yeah as you probably know first three years they leave you alone occasionally you come and visit and see how things are going um, but gradually they will say you start preparing for work um, and you're bound by um, claim and commitment. How old uh, did you say the young one was? Eight 11. months. So one's 11 and one's... Sorry, say again? You have two children. Yeah, so my, my older one is not, uh, is uh, uh, 29. Oh, 29, so, uh, okay. Uh -huh. All right, so it's the 11 year old, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I know that it's, it's 11, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, so they would expect you to get, comply with claim and commitment. Um, so it's kind of normal, really, to be honest. You treat it as a normal person. So yeah, so if, you, if there is um, a claim and commitment, you have to comply with the contract with the people getting the benefit. Um, and if you don't, obviously they will say you have not complied. However, in terms of student finance and universal credit, 
uh, yes, student finance will be seen as income. Okay. It is income. It's income. It is income. Okay. okay. Because Marcel, they you tell want... me. Uh, sorry. Say. Sorry. Go on. Thanks, Marisol. Marisol, you understand when, or everybody, do you understand when Ripon is saying claimant commitment? Every like this is maybe claimant commitment. This is your agreement. Yeah. With the job center. Do you have this claimant commitment? So with your... uh, I I I no uh, I I don't understand too much about that, but uh, mm. I have uh, an advisor. Sometimes mm. when I need to apply something, uh, yeah. she helped me because uh, for me it's mm. difficult. I, I sometimes okay. I am lost. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, if she's friendly and you trust her and you can be open with her, just ask her. But Ripon's given the basic answer is that, that it will be treated basic, like yeah. income. Income. Because yeah. yeah. it is income. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Ripon, Thank can you, I ask one question? Go on, Nelsia. Yeah. Um, do you know with the number of that credit, um, can you just ask them, uh, can you ask like you know, help people to help you to find like a, a course for you while you... Um, while you can't do nothing with um your time like like me i'm a single mom with two children and then i want to find something that can help me um to benefit me to find a job so that's why i'm asking like are they okay to provide you like find your course or study something actually they do yes um, so long you can evidence to your coach because coach your coach has discretion and you know they will also help you when you when you've got a good coach to provide you with courses and money for these courses for you to develop yourself so it uh, enables you to get a job yes stop your coach they're, sometimes they're, they really hide it when i remember when i was craving yeah. i'd found out about these funds and they keep it so secret. yeah you know um Thank you, Vincent. Yeah, sometimes I think you have to say to them, it depends. If you've got a nice one who's helping you, um, good. Sometimes these some of the job centre workers, they pretend like it's their own money, you know, and they don't like you to know about it. Um, so you have to kind of say, look, I need this help with this course. You know, yeah. I know there is money available to help me. Um, yeah. But I know that, yeah, sometimes they don't like to tell you. Yeah, because um, the things with my situation, I can't do nothing right now because um, I'm a single mom to two yeah. children, but they're still under age, so I have to be like with them, and then I can't do nothing. So that's why I want to. And then they asked me to do. Uh, do you know the commitment that they asked me to find a job, and I tell yeah. them about my situation, but I still, I still got children that are under age that need to look after. Yeah. And then, um, and also, I want to provide myself with a good learning so I can yeah. easily find job when I'm, I'm ready to go for it. So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. The other thing you may want to do, Neltia, if you go on, yes. if you go on Turn to Us website, there are lots of other grants that are available for, maybe for your situation. Go no, no, not directly. Oh, good. good. Because okay. to be honest, we I really, could... I really do want to use my time to sure. improve something to, because I'm a single mom. I'm a single woman as well to look after for my kids. I want to find something that can benefit me and my Nelsia, children. Which teacher. class are you in? Who's teacher? Who's your teacher? Um, my, my class. Nelson. Yeah, okay. yeah, I mean, this is something maybe in your class as well. We can. Like all of our classes, if this is you know these particular situations, we can look at the services that are there locally because yeah. it's not just like the benefits or the job centre. There'll be other organisations that will support, yeah. you know, in every area for single welcome. parents for different thank groups. Thank you so people. much. Oh, yeah. thank you so so much. I really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you so much. Yeah, you've been really great there. today, Nelsia. You've helped generate all the questions and help us understand the situation. Okay. Okay. Can I ask one question? Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask one question, please? Yeah, Liam. 
Yes, thank you so much. Uh, I want to ask this question because uh, uh, we are group, English group, we have uh, immigration uh, company. Uh, because we have one question, uh, some people said, uh, uh, if you have more children, you, uh, you can accept uh, uh, collect more benefit. So some parents, some <laughs> lady and the parents is lazy. They have more okay. children to uh, I mean, accept. <laughs> What's the problem? Uh, they uh, save the more money, but uh, just uh, I heard uh, this benefit is not uh, correct. Mm. They can't have more more people have mm. uh, more mm. benefit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, can I just answer? I mean, it's worth. So you're right, Leanne. There's a good point you're making that they've said that they're only paying child benefits for the first two. I think just be careful. Well, it's always difficult sometimes when we try and say, oh, well, look, no, that's not true. If we believe that children, that all the children should be able to have it, then when we make our argument against it, we have to be careful not to say, um, we're not saying we agree with the government. We're just clear making a fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like when people say, you know, we say, oh, uh, people say, oh, migrants just claim benefits. When we say, oh, well, it's not that easy. No, no. It doesn't means, mean, sometimes no. we can also mean it should be easy. And we should, those children should be able to get those benefits. So, no, because we, to, yeah, yeah, because, because we have this camping, yeah, debate, mm. this camping in the, uh, we base the Lucic uh, English class. Mm. Uh, we, we have uh, many questions is positive, many questions is negative. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, because one question is like that. I don't mm -hmm. understand when I read it, when I uh, have this license, I think this question must uh, take out, but nope. it's not a question, yeah. All right, well, we can talk at Lucy and that can talk about that within this Migrate mm. campaign project. Good, but it's a good point. Mm. Right, Ripon, do you want to conclude for us? Well, I mean, I've done my bit, really, so... Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, more than your bit. <laughs> I feel like you've been... <laughs> yeah. I have a question, please. Oh, fella. Okay, go go on. Yeah. I was silent today. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I've never heard it. So, uh, go ahead. I never claimed anything till now. Till last month, I claimed uh, universal credit mm -hmm. because we fell on hard times. and. They asked me to some commitments, mm -hmm. and usually I do. Yeah, usually I do volunteering, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like I do a lot of volunteering things around, and uh, I don't know. They asked me to work and to find like a job that I feel uh, comfortable with. Uh, it's quite hard because I mm -hmm. have experience but i don't have the let's say the <laughs> the qualification the paper qualification mm -hmm. uh to, to to work within what i want i want to do things like library within schools something like that but i don't have psychology degrees or administrative degrees and I was thinking about maybe I should go self-employed and do what I love to do, like uh, art and craft for women, for children, things like that. But shall I stop universal credit first or can I do both at the same time? Let me finish that one and go. Sorry, can you repeat the question for me? So should she, so if she's thinking like maybe instead of applying for jobs that she doesn't have the qualifications for, mm -hmm. but she has the experience, maybe she should, sorry, fella, I know you speak clearly anyway, but just to, but then should she maybe go self-employed and do start trying to do some kind of work on a self-employed basis? But if she does do that, you can still claim universal credit. You just have to declare your earnings, no? Yeah, so self-employment covers a number of, what's the word, uh, scenarios, situations. Either you're unemployed, you are employed, or unfit to work, uh, or self-employed. Mm -hmm. 
So if we're saying she's self-employed, the self-employment has to be a genuine self-employment. Not, oh, I can't bother to look for us. No, please don't take it personally. <laughs> I can't bother yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you see? You have I heard of that. Genuine. Or preparation, <laughs> yeah. Or preparation for a you know, going mainstream mm. self-employment where you would become, I suppose, all... Like, say, yeah, have an entrepreneur somehow, not yeah, a big yeah, scale, yeah. but a small scale. Like, mm. so, so it has to be genuine, yeah. Okay, and there's a lot that they could do to kind of prove it. They, uh, what you will get a first year, uh, when you think, say you want to go through um, so a self employment path, first year they will support you and your income probably won't be the same, something like £54 per week you'll be getting, like an intern, I guess. Um, and and once, you, once you build up on it, the following year, um, it's more about, in the past, they will say, okay, whatever happens, whatever your income is going to be, in the past, they will say, we expect that there is a minimum income floor. And what that means that Regardless of your actual um, income, they will say, by default, we assume, since you said you're self-employed, we assume that you're working 36 hours a week and also on minimum wage. So therefore, you probably won't get anything because you said you're self-employed, you've taken the path. However, currently, they have put a hold on minimum income floor temporarily. It does boil down to based on your income rather than what the expectation is. Okay. So because I was thinking about like, if I start now, I have no income yet. You know, when mm -hmm. you start self-employed, you have to find customers and yeah. all those stuff. You are more like spending money. I agree. Like investment. So yeah. Then earning money. Yeah. So I was thinking, I don't know, do they have like sessions or courses on how to go, like to do the, you know, because I don't know how to do the legal things or the finances. Do they provide that, like courses for that? Talk to your coach. Okay. Uh, yeah. And also look at tax aid. And fellow also ask Marta about this because Marta was working in Brent. Um, on startup businesses that was her previous job so um yeah speak to Marta about it and there is this thing called like the new deal or something what is it called like something like that or for people who want to set up business anyway we'll find out sounds yeah. great i remember mm -hmm. new deal yeah absolutely okay thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah um written um yeah. sorry um it's okay can I, can I have that information that you said that you, where should I go to find a course? Talk to a coach. Talk to the coach. coach. Oh, so right. We, can, uh, we have to follow up in contact. I, I think you say something to me that I can go to find uh, somewhere. Oh, turn to us grants. Turn to us grants. Wait a sec. Turn to us grants. Yeah, I'll send it to you now. Wait a sec. There are lots of grants there. If you fit the criteria, just apply. Please. Okay, so tell us, let's make this the last question um, about the benefit caps. Okay. Cap. Then, yeah. Go ahead. Well, maybe if I start and then you can give the details. So a benefit cap is the maximum amount of benefits that you can get. Yeah. So there's a limit. Yeah. You can't. Um, so the benefit cap is £26,000. Yeah. It's four hundred and forty one pounds per week. So wow. I'm not sure how that would work out, per, you know, but I'll leave you to calculate it. <laughs> yeah, so it depends on your situation. If you're a single yeah. person, there's a cap. If you're a you know a couple, there's a cap. If you've yeah. got children, there's a cap. Yeah. But there's yeah. an overall cap. Yes. It doesn't matter yeah. if you've got ten children and you know, blah 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 blah. Apart from disability, that's a bit different. Yeah. Okay, Some yeah. disability benefits are not considered. Here you but go. In general, there's a, a, a limit yeah. on how much the government will pay. So, yes. Robin, I can tell you exactly because I've just looked at it on on the uh, you know, government website. The benefit cap inside London is four hundred and forty-two pounds per week, 
for, for if you're a if you're in a couple relationship, um, which also includes um, children, and if you and it will get four hundred and forty two per week if you're a single parent with your child living with you. Okay, we can. Can you show us the website where we, it shows the benefit cap and then people can? Yeah, uh, or in fact, is... the best thing would be I'll give you a benefit cap calculator. Here we are. Mm -hmm. There we go. There we go. Send okay, it. so these links there will save the chat. Yeah. Lucy, okay. can you, would you do that? So Lucy will save the chat and we can make a little document with all the links that have been yeah. sent. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, sorry, is, is that you mean for the total of the week? Yes. Yeah. Oh. But that includes the housing benefit, the rent, that includes like everything. Yes. But honey, um, it means that's the maximum you can get. Yes. Oh, wow. Unless you have you, you have disability in the house, carers in the house. Sorry about that. Quick that's question. Great. What's the um, benefit cap? What's mean that? Why are you taking this money? For what? Cap. Well, uh, that's yeah. what we were. It's, not, it's what we were just saying. The cap is the maximum the government will give. It's oh, like the limit. Yeah. Cap. Yeah, yeah. No matter what your circumstances, that is the absolute maximum you will get. Mm. Mm. However, mm. that doesn't include childcare cost. A separate. And how about if you are walking? Yeah, and as you know, taper rate will come in. It will reduce the amount of universal credit you get, taper rate. So it's not the cap, but they're deducting it yeah, for yeah, different yeah. reasons. Exactly. Oh, and savings, don't forget, it takes away again universal credit. There are lots of other, you know, perks. The things that will, will, will reduce it. There are several things that will reduce it. Yes. Mm. Um, I'm asking you one question. If you are the family, like how much can you save it? The government allowed to save it in the year for um, six thousand pounds. Yeah. Six, so six, yeah. Well, so from the point of view of DWP, each not each month, year, all the time. So yeah. At any point. Exactly. So universal credit calculates every month. If your yeah. bank account is six thousand one month and five thousand the following month, that will calculate accordingly. Mm -hmm. But if you end up if you end up saving like because you're saving every year you're trying to save yeah. and you end up saving sixteen thousand pounds you don't get yeah. some of some yeah. of these benefits. Yes, but you but, know, like hmm. yeah. But if I'm not using my, for example, I save sixty thousand a year and I did this, I didn't use it, and the next year I'm gonna save that maybe like I add like five thousand or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, well, if it's five thousand, it's fine. Sorry? It's 5,000, is fine. Oh. Oh, but it's in addition. Mm. Yeah, so... Annie, if you keep if you keep increasing your savings, then yeah. it will affect, it will affect yeah. your benefit. It will affect you, the, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Reba, uh, if your saving account for, for the children, they affect as well? Ah, if it's saving for children, that's something, as you can say, if money is on trust for kids. So yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. So that's so one. The bank account is uh, the child. Do you save an account for the child? Yeah, that's, that's separate. Yeah. That's for. Okay, that's yeah. good to know. Yeah. So yeah. let's say, for example, you have a bank account with a credit union where you put regularly for kids, and it's for the purpose for the kid when the kid grows up, becomes 18, 19. That's a separate one. But uh, that's that's not going to affect, is it? No, it's it's not your saving. It's his saving for his purpose in the future. It's a trust fund. Oh, yeah. really good to know. Thank you so much, Reba. Mm -hmm. So many information. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, so, so, so much. Thank you for your time and really your good. effort and yeah. everyone for your attention. You survived. Yeah. You survived the universe. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, I've so them, I've they need I've a I've second time. They oh, need a second okay. license. <laughs> By the way, I've sent you the slides as well. Okay, thank, thank you. you so thank much. You. That's okay. Thank so All right, everybody. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, Reuben. Bye. Bye.